Okay everyone and welcome to another one of my ZBrush tutorials and what we're going to do today here is we're going to make a fancy wooden chair uh, for lack of a better term but anyway I have made one previously and uh, we'll show you what we're going to get into here uh, let's see which one was it uh, it was a project file I had saved Let's see. Fancy wooden chair. Where are you? Okay, here it is. Well, anyway, I'll tell you. We ha I had a little interruption earlier, so I'm remaking the first part. And I've got my Skype off and my uh, Google off, so no one can interrupt me. But anyway, in the first part of the video, the first part of the tutorial. What I'm going to do, we're just we're going to ignore these armrests in the seat because that is the second part. We're just going to focus on making these back ribs and this top arch. So anyway, uh, this is going to be divided into three parts. Uh, the uh, second one is where I add the seat and armrest, and then the third part will be uh, adding the legs, just to be fairly short. Uh, just a lot of modeling going on here. So what we're going to do, we're just going to go ahead and get started here. We're going to clear our canvas, and uh, we'll clear the canvas here. And I'll show you how to make the ribs in the top arch. And then uh, later on I'll do number three. So anyway, uh, I won't get any interruptions this time. <laughs> so uh, we're just going to go ahead and initialize again, uh, just to be on the safe side. and. Uh, I won't be able to save this under the same name. But anyway, to get started, we start with the cylinder 3D. And uh, make sure we can edit it. And I like to turn all my reference planes on so I can see what's going on and uh, tell you what axes uh, to do our different deformations and resizing. So we're going to turn this into a poly mesh. First off, first, first things. And then we're going to go ahead and make this uh, cylinder. We're going to get it kind of skinny. Make a skinny little cylinder there. And uh, I'm going to give it a little length here. Like so. So we've got one of our ribs here established. And uh, I like to have everything uh, up and down on the Y axis because the rest of the modeling will uh, proceed like this. So, anyway, um, uh, the transform lines are good, but sometimes if you're not wat watching what you're doing, you can be a little off, a little tilted. So I'm going to emphasize the offset tool for this one. And of course here, the x-axis is pointing toward us. The y is up and down, and z is left and right. So what we want to do, we want to rotate the uh, our rib here 90 degrees. And that gets it up and down with the y axis. So we got that. Now it's a, we go in our sub tool, and you can name it if you like. That's tile up you. I've been calling it chair, uh, chair back rib. Oh, that looks like I put a uh, slash in there. That might not go. So. So now a chair back rib. Okay. So we got that. And we want to make eight of these. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this one. And we're going to use an offset to keep things, uh, you know, really square and uh, straight. So we're going to offset this by the Z. That duplicate. You can go either left or right. doesn't really matter. Get a little space in there. And then you want to merge these. You can just merge down. You can go to the Subtool Master, but at this point it's really not necessary. So we've got a duplication here. We're going to duplicate this again. And we go down to our offset. Now let's see, left to right. Get a little space in there. Alright, and then we merge down again. Alright, so we got four of them. Everything's nice and straight. I'm going to duplicate this one more time. So once again, offset left to right. 
that's up to you. And then we'll space there. And we merge down again. Okay, so we got a set of ribs here. Now, um, <coughs> you can, we can add additional geometry if you like. I think I will. Because when you're working with a poly mesh, especially when you're bending and uh, moving things around, you might want to have a little additional geometry. So we'll go ahead and get that out of the way. You can leave on the smooth tool, which will leave it round in on each cylinder. You, know, you don't have to, but in this case, I'm going to turn it off. So we're going to divide this up, and that's going to be good enough. We've got plenty of uh, geometry there. And uh, while I'm at it, I am going to go ahead and reset my pivot point to get everything aligned with the X, Y, and Z axis. Because the rest of this modeling is going to involve keeping things symmetrical. So you'll see me do that often uh, as resetting a pivot, pivot point. Now I want to uh, decrease the height of these, and that will be the Y axis. So we're going to size it down by the Y axis. We're going to get things a little short here. So we got that. All right. Now uh, I want to give this kind of a fan shape. You can use uh, the reason I did this because when you look when you're going to use a large size tool, you want I want to kind of uh, kind of arch everything out and make it kind of smooth. So we're going to turn on our transform geometry. I mean our symmetry rather, and the Z, and make sure you have your local symmetry on. And I'm going to choose the move elastic. Uh, there are some differences between move elastic, move topology, move. I don't know precisely what those are, but the move elastic has kind of uh, give me the effect I want. So we're just going to stretch this up, kind of arch it around, and then we're going to go to the side here and kind of fan it out. So that is the ribs of our chair. And so we'll get out of that. Just go back to our standard. And so uh, we can go ahead and dynamesh this. Uh, I'm going to keep my dynameshes low. I had a crash in the first part of the video. So we'll just dynamesh at 128. Because we're going to create most of our details within the poly mesh before we uh, dynamesh. And so you may have some triangles now, but that's a pretty smooth topological surface. Uh, you can go down to the deformations here as a feature. I recently haven't, I've, well, I've seen it before, but I haven't used it. But uh, you can polish this. This kind of gives it a global smoothing. And uh, you can do that uh, as many times as you like. I'm going to leave it at that. Things are nice and smooth there. So now we're going to create our arch. Uh, we always want, since we're doing a symmetrical type of modeling, just in case we'll get our pivot point set again. So what we're going to do down now is we're going to make our, our top wooden arch. And uh, we're going to, we got our subtool up here, and we're going to introduce a cube 3D. And we'll pop it, and it puts it right in the middle. Make sure you got it selected. And one of the things I've been uh, talking about here in this particular tutorial is to get when you sculpt on the side of a poly mesh and you got your radial uh, geometry on the sides, you'll get pinching. So what I've been doing is I'm going to go ahead and rotate this radial geometry toward the top where we won't have as much problem with it. So we've got our poly mesh 3D. You can rename this. We'll call this. Uh, uh, chair back arch. So, yeah, named. Now we want to rotate this by the x-axis. So we go down to our rotate x. And I like to do numerical rotations. Keeps everything kind of nice and square. And we're going to flatten this down by the y. So we're pointing up and down with the y-axis. So it'll give us a good little reference there. And now we're going to squeeze this in on the X and Z. Uh, we'll do the X here first. This is going to be our top arch. And then we're going to lengthen this by the Z. Like so. You can go a little bit over. 
as you can always read a form at some other point. Now what I want to do is I want to uh, do the smooth bend on this and we're going to add a little geometry before we do that. I'm going to divide this up to level 4, delete our lower. Now as you can see I left the smooth button on. It doesn't really matter. It's uh, totally up to you if you want to round corners. In some cases you might want a round corner on your particular piece of geometry. But anyway, the smooth bend, which I haven't really figured out how this works, but when you do it by the Y, you get a nice uh, smooth curvature. What I'm going to try to do here, this is going to try, this may not work. I'm going to rotate this by the Z and get our radial geometry facing us and see if we can do the smooth bend because it will save me a step. If it doesn't work, I'll just go back to what I've done before. So, uh, we're going to rotate this 90 degrees by the Z axis. And this will save me one step if it works. So, now, when we do our smooth bend, we'll see what happens. Uh, so it's still doing it. So we can rotate this out. We won't go back. But we will back up on the bend just a little bit. And uh, now we'll just rotate that again. Uh, the Z. It's going to be upside down. One more time. There we go. Now, like I say, that S bend thing, I haven't got that quite figured out. But anyway, this is going to be the top part of the back of our chair. <coughs> and so, we're going to offset it to bring it to the top. And we go to our deformation. We need to go up by the Y. Drag it up here. And uh, what I want to make sure we can turn this on and take a look. Make sure we don't have any geometry uh, poking through. And that's going to cover that. So, uh, we've got our arch, and this will be the end of part one, and I'll pick up uh, the second part two, which is kind of long, and then part three will be short, where we make the legs for our chair. So, I'll make sure you stay tuned, and in the meantime, uh, we'll go ahead and convert a uh, top arch to a dynamesh before I end the tutorial. Alright, we got our dynamesh. And it looks pretty smooth. <coughs> so here we're just going to merge down. And we'll merge down. And this will be, and as always, make sure you try to save your work. Fancy chair video tutorial on that save. And so anyway, that's it. And uh, stay tuned for part two. And then I'm going to bring up uh, part three. And we'll get it all uploaded to YouTube. And I'll post it on Zebra Central where you can uh, take a look at it. So thanks for watching. And that's it for part one.